Okay, you are passing online or maybe you have seen someone doing this on a mobile PCB drilling down a mobile PCB doing jumper in the inner layer of a mobile PCB that's not magic that's very possible even for you to know how you can start doing this and you need to have the tools that you need to use to do that you need to have the knowledge in which you need to be able to know exactly what to do okay if you take a look right here you will see that we have a very important uh, uh, screen right here we have a very important stuff going on in my screen so what we have right here is actually a mobile phone pc so why does it look different for those of you who have been using schematic diagrams you know that this is uh, big markings right but if you check all these lines right here you can see that these are the lines that are available these are the lines that are available in this mobile pcb starting from the first layer to the last layer so this particular pcb right here has nine layers and all the layers tracks are visible right here so the tool that i'm using right now is uh, moving schematic diagram and using this tool you can be able to know exactly where a particular line for example the line that runs from the v back to the to the charging ic the one that runs from the charging ic the vph of the charging ic to the power manager ic using this tool you will know if that line passes through the first second or third layer of the mobile pcb and with this you will know exactly where the line passes, the position in the mobile PC is where the line passes through. So you can see that using these tools, schematic diagrams, is very important, like I always see. But that's not even the case. Reading bit mapping is very easy, but troubleshooting with bit mapping is not something that we, that you can could say that okay, you want to troubleshoot a mobile phone with a bit map. So the bitmap only shows you from the name, it only shows you the map of the mobile PCB and where lines are heading to. But when it comes to troubleshooting using schematic diagram software as a whole, you need the bitmap, you need the PCB layout, and you need what you call the schematic diagram, which is the big deal. The schematic diagram shows you the schematic of the mobile PCB or a particular section of that mobile PCB and it shows you the value of the components and the voltage of the components in that particular circuit and that particular section of a mobile PCB. But if you don't know how to read schematic diagrams, I tell you what, schematic diagram software will be useless to you except you just want to use them then do jumper in a mobile PCB because with the help of this own schematic as well, you can have a PCB guidelines which is this let me show you what I'm talking about okay this is what I call PCB guidelines and for people who don't know how to read schematic diagrams or go deep into schematic diagrams doing any other stuff they can easily use this to do jumper in a mobile PCB for example you want to jump uh, the V bus which is the charging 5 volt from the from the lower PCB to the upper PCB, you want to jump at the V, but you want to jump at any line, maybe the data pin line of the charging section. You can use the guideline to do that, but this is no troubleshooting. Yeah, it shows you exactly what to do. You understand? So, which means that if you check, if you are trying to jump at, and you check and you do the jump at, and still the problem doesn't get solved. You will know what to do which is why i have my professional legal course which will teach you how you can troubleshoot any mobile phone for starting from the base to the professional level of troubleshooting so with this course you will just learn about uh, uh, circuits you will just learn about how to troubleshoot basic stuff you will start from the basics to the professional level of troubleshooting so this is the reason why you will need my mobile repair and course and right now there is a chance for you to get one more program schematic diagram license in case you gain my professional level course always when you purchase the course you will have to purchase the software but from now till the end of this month when you get the course you will have a free one month in your schematic diagram to go through to go through the course while using the schematic diagram as practical of what you are learning
in the course. You understand? So Russian get this course right now to learn and start troubleshooting mobile repairing like a pro. Okay, so when I talk so when I talk about mobile repairing troubleshooting, most people won't actually understand that because for example, you are seeing this right here. This is OUM schematic diagram. And if I come right here, you will see that we have our bit mapping. So with this bit mapping, you can easily do jumper, like it shows you the location of the track, where the track is heading to, it shows you where components have been placed in that mobile PCB, such as ICs, so we have the resistors, capacitors, and it shows you even where the, the scrolls of the mobile PCB are being scrolled. You understand, it shows you everything in a mobile PCB. But if we come to the schematic, <laughs> level right here the schematic level is a very big deal this schematic diagram section is the big deal when it comes to troubleshooting mobile repair so if someone tells you that okay i know how to troubleshoot mobile phone problems and the person does not know how to which schematic diagram that means that the person is limited to the things that he can troubleshoot is limited to the level of troubleshooting that someone who knows how to which schematic diagram can do and troubleshoot you understand so when it comes to schematic diagram for example let me show you how useful schematic diagram is this is not a, a video on how to use schematic diagram but i will give you a glimpse on how you can use schematic diagrams to troubleshoot mobile phone calls okay if you if you check right here you will see that this schematic diagram says that this is the battery connector it says that cone right here it actually means the battery connector so if you look right here, you will see that this is actually our battery connector. And let me go to the to the guideline to show you this battery connector. Okay, so this battery connector in the guideline right here, this is the battery connector in the schematic diagram. And when troubleshooting right here, if we are finding an open if we are finding an open circuit in the battery connector line. Whether we are finding the V the V bat or we are finding the battery IC or the V V bat sent, you will see that we have the V bat line. This is the V bat line, and the V bat line passes only through one resistor right here. This resistor will be a, a low value resistor which acts only as a fuse in the section of that mobile PCB. So this resistor right here is R six. 64 thing and if you come to the guideline right here you will see that this is the resistor and this is the battery connector we have the v part it passes through this, this resistor right here and the resistor only as as a fuse when it passes through this resistor you will see that here if you come to the schematic diagram you will see that it gets into this ic right here so if you see it shows right here it means that it gets to an ic and where is the IC in the mobile PCB? If you use the guideline again, then come right here, you will see that it gets into the IC. It gets into this IC, which is the charging IC. So if we, ha we have the charging IC right here, and for, for, for someone who actually knows this troubleshooting and understand the mobile PCB completely, the person will know that, okay, this section right here is the charging section and this is where the vph of the mobile pcb which is the main power supply is coming out from so when the mobile phone receives the vbat voltage it gets into the charging ic the charging ic converts that vbat to the vph and gives out the vph voltage right here in this inductor you understand so let me show you what i'm talking about if i home to the guideline right here if i come to the guideline okay this is our battery connector if i click let me zoom in if i click in the battery connector right here you will see that the, this is a vmap line that i click it's blinking red right here so if i click on it you will see that it's connected to the rs 1614 64 in resistor which i say is a fuse resistor so you can see that it hasn't it hasn't crossed to this other side which means that it you can see that it's not 
supply and voltage to the other side of the resistor, which is to tell you that if this resistor is bad, it will cause R to circuit in the debug line. So what if I click on the other side of the resistor, you will see that the circuit continues from here. So if I zoom out, you will see that if I zoom out, then home to this other side. Okay, so if I zoom out right here, you will see that it comes to this line. It gets into the charging IC through these pins. Let me zoom in a bit. So the V bar gets into the charging IC through this pin. So from here, we have the V bar voltage that gets into the charging IC. The charging IC then converts that V bar to the main power supply, which is the VPH. So if I check, click on this other side, you will see that it's not connected to this other side. So 